In the comments, I keep reading things like, Timo, who's talking to you during the race? How do you manage to make your game look so crisp? Or how do I get this pit board to display? The answer is actually quite simple. It is just a few apps that I've come to appreciate over the years and use practically all of the time. So here are five software-based boosters that can significantly enhance your racing experience in terms of immersion and authenticity. And the best part is they all come for either no or only low costs. So let's start right away with the perhaps most powerful and flexible tool available to ambitious virtual racers, SimHub. SimHub is the telemetry control center for sim racing and other simulations. A modular software that connects dashboards, overlays, LEDs, vibration motors, base shakers and all sorts of other equipment to almost all popular racing simulations. This allows race and vehicle data to be displayed in real time on separate screens or even mobile devices. At the same time, wind generators, LED strips, pedal vibrators for ABS and TC, your haptic mat or other vibration or shake based devices. So if you're asking about the set pit board, the simple answer is it's a SimHub overlay. True, the setup can take some time and some technical affinity also helps immensely. Occasionally, there are performance losses when SimUp has too much to do at once. Nevertheless, SimUp is an inexpensive all-in-one solution for telemetry display and immersion that I wouldn't want to be without anymore. What's more, purchasing the one-time donation license to be able to use the program to its full extent was perhaps the best few bucks I've ever spent in my sim racing life. Radio check. Spotter, radio check. Crucif is the second app that I wouldn't want to be without and that I use practically all of the time whenever I sit in my rig. Crucif is a free sim racing app that feels like real pit radio. A virtual crew provides the driver with live strategic announcements, spotter information and telemetry feedback. You can assign all the functions to the buttons or keys of your choice or use the integrated voice control to find out how much fuel you have left, what your tire temperatures and wear are like, or what your pace is. Crewchief has become indispensable, especially in online racing. A spotter warns you in milliseconds about vehicles in your blind spot, incidents on the track, or gives you lapping info, a real competitive advantage that can make a difference how your race ends. As a single player, I'm also impressed by the extensive customization options. In addition to different voices for the race engineer and spotter, individual trigger thresholds and self-written macros allow for an incredible depth of fine-tuning. For example, in 1980, there was less telemetry data than today, much less. And only the bare essentials were communicated via radio. Accordingly, my crew chief profile for a let's say group 5 race, would exclude tire temperatures or spotter announcements. As open source software, Crewchief supports almost all popular racing simulations and is also a real lightweight. Weighing in at only around 200 megabytes, the software causes hardly any CPU load. And best of all, Crewchief is completely free. Donations are accepted. In a word, unbeatable. More contrast? Here you go. Different color palette? Yeah, sure. Photorealism? How many? Technicolor, VHS or body cam look? Come on, give me a challenge. Reshade is the Swiss army knife of image post-processing for graphics connoisseurs. It costs nothing, delivers cinema-like visuals and is infinitely customizable. Reshade is a free open source framework that acts as a universal shader injector between the game engine and the graphics interface. Once installed, any game or title can be altered with sophisticated post-processing effects. Especially older games or sim racing titles without modern graphics options in particular receive a noticeable boost in quality without having to touch the source code. 
In my opinion, the best reshades give the game the desired look without compromising performance. However, if you want to play competitively online, you should check the anti-cheat guidelines carefully to see if reshade is on the blacklist. I've been using various reshades for years, especially for AMS2, to enhance my driving experience visually or when I'm aiming for a specific look for video editing. It has become an integral part of my virtual racing. Do you play a Seto Corsa without mods? Or Automobilista 2 without skin packs? Would you rather race against a Markus Fenstermacher than Michael Schumacher? If you answer yes to these questions, well, you can safely skip this chapter. Everyone else knows that true immersion can only be achieved through authenticity and originality. It's a fact that no racing game has all the tracks, cars or motorsport licenses in the world. That's why modding exists. That's why we have the ability to edit or add certain game files. Even focus titles like ACC, LMU or the EAF1 games can be modified to a small extent. Without modability, Assetto Corsa would have been forgotten long ago. However, the sandbox nature of the game ensures that, even 11 years after its release, new cars and tracks appear practically every day. Over the years, quite a few have appeared that can be dubbed better than the Kuna's originals. Apps and tools such as Pure and CSP transform the outdated graphics engine into a contemporary photorealistic experience that users even pay for on a monthly basis. Patreon sends its regards. Guilty! Side note on AC Evo. In its current state, the game lacks a USP and consequently relevance. To make it a success in the long run, in my opinion, Kunos will be well advised to open it up to modability as much as possible. Without custom AI and skins, I wouldn't have put 2000 hours into AMS2 and made over 200 videos. Original driver names and stats, and even more so, real skins have become essential, even indispensable for me. A recreation of the 1990 Japan GP with half generic, half fictional car liveries and against Aire Silva is not half as much fun as with real data. Period. Beam Eye Tracker is a Steam app and promises accurate AI supported tracking of the eyes and head for less than 30 euros. For me, as an immersion junkie who finds VR too sweaty and fiddly, and other eye trackers too expensive and hardware intensive, this seems to be just the thing. Beam Eye Tracker only requires the webcam for tracking and the open source freeware OpenTrack for communicating with the games. In addition to practically all recent racing games, flight simulators and even RTS games are also supported. And what can I say? It works. Turning, tilting, rolling of your eyes or head everything is recognized. The expanded field of view increases immersion and if you fiddle around with the options mapping a bit, you also get reasonably natural behavior. Installation and calibration are quickly done and the default settings work surprisingly well. Gaming extensions must be enabled so that OpenTrack can communicate with Beam. Further settings can then be adjusted there. Different profiles can be created and fine-tuned individually using the options and mapping. That actually can make a big difference, as you can see here. Most newer racing games work directly with Beam Eye Tracker. For eye tracking to work in AMS2, however, you need to start the game in Steam VR mode and then select the helmet camera in the game. It's also interesting to compare this with the camera leaning options offered by the game itself. Here you can see the fixed camera at the top and all leaning values set to max at the bottom. What here looks quite realistic and hardly any different from the eye tracking has one huge difference though. With the leaning camera, the game decides when it moves. And that almost never corresponds to my natural movement. And it's because of that asynchronicity why I've long since moved away from these extreme values. Beam is actually becoming a cool alternative 
for me. I'm still testing the whole thing and trying to find my optimal settings. Just if you're interested, Beam also offers a demo version on its Steam page. Just make sure you do your homework beforehand so you don't waste the demo time troubleshooting. So what do you think of this selection? Which tools and apps do you use to further enhance your driving experience? Let me know in the comments. And if you need new hardware, I have another tip for you. At Sim Ultimate, you will find numerous products from all well-known brands. Use my affiliate link in the description below to save 5% on your purchase and do me a little favor. Thank you. For me, it's now time to go back into my rig I need to keep working on my Beam Eye Tracker profile, obviously. Guys, have fun in your favorite sim and see you next time. Bye.